Welcome to the Watchers Brawl and round three of the lower bracket uh, with our matchup Morningside Mustangs versus Power Supply Unit. I am Spaceman and I'm joined by the highest flying Dutchman I know, man of class. Uh, class, you pretty excited about tonight's matchup? I'm 100% excited about last, uh, well, tonight's matchup uh, for multiple reasons. One, because we've got two teams, two, because it's Overwatch, and three, because we just had a new update yesterday. So, you know, a lot of exciting things to look forward to. A lot of exciting things to look forward to, but uh, one really exciting thing uh, that we don't need to look forward to because we've got him here now is we have uh, Argon from Power Supply Unit with us for a pre-show interview. Uh, so, Argon, welcome. Um, how are you feeling right now? You've just come out of a 3-0 uh, victory versus Spec Gaming in round two. Uh, are you, are you carrying that confidence forward? Hey, thanks. Yeah, we're we're pretty uh, pretty confident. We've been practicing a lot, so should be a good game. Okay, and how confident are you going forward with the new patch that's recently been released? Have you been uh, preparing around that, you know, playing on the PTR, or have you just been keeping things simple? We've had a couple of uh, PTR scrims. Um, we have some ideas of what might be good this patch uh, prior to Baptiste, so um, we're going to try to use some of those comps today. Okay, excellent. And uh, so we might see some interesting compositions uh, coming out. Um, how have you been enjoying this uh, tournament and this format so far? Has the uh, hero banning system been uh, affecting quite a few of your games, or have you found uh, have, have you found it to be more of a second choice, and you're just sticking with uh, what you you know? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely shaking things up. Um, something like a Lucio ban can be really impactful for a team that's used to playing goats. So definitely shakes up the comps that we're allowed to run. And uh, I believe you're a support main for your team as well. So uh, do you like playing Lucio or are there any other heroes that you specialize on? Yeah, um, I, I'm a flex for my team. So I play a lot of, a uh, little bit of Lucio, a lot of Zenyatta. Um, and then for 2 2 comps, I'm on uh, DPS most of the time. So. so so, what are your opinions on the patch changes for Lucio and, and Zenyatta? You know, Zenyatta's getting that little bit of extra damage and Lucio losing a bit of that uh, speed boost potential for his team, but gaining that speed whilst wall riding. Yeah, I, I think the, the Lucio nerfs are definitely detrimental to a Ryan Goats comp, um, specifically on some of the maps with more outdoor areas where Ryan Goats is forced to rotate more. Um, and then that in combination with the Far Mercy buffs, the Ball buffs, um, it opens up a lot of opportunity for Ball triple DPS comps, 2-2-2 dives, stuff like that to kind of abuse Goats when possible. Well, um, hopefully we will be seeing some of that this evening, perhaps, because it is nice having a little bit of a refreshing change from those heavy 3-3 compositions. Uh, before we do get underway, are there any shout outs or any last things you'd like to tell uh, the viewers? Um, enjoy the game, I guess. Okay, well, thank you, and uh, I'm sure we will. Uh, wishing you the best of luck and the rest of your team as well. And also to uh, Morningside Mustangs, because we, we are neutral casters here, aren't we, Class? But we're going to be getting into the action very, very shortly. And, Class, how do you think these uh, patch changes are, are going to affect today's game? I mean, they, they're they going to affect the games to a degree that teams that have already liked running more DPS-heavy comps and not so much the 3-3 that we've been seeing a lot... Uh, they're going to have more of a a, a a little bit of a better time. So most of the time what you've been seeing is that 3-3 and team, teams trying to run uh, something else against it. Uh, they've not been quite as successful as you might have hoped. But now that GOATS has been kind of brought down a little bit and then the other damage buffs has brought the other compositions up a little bit, they can actually do a lot. Uh, I mean, the biggest one of the biggest buffs that not everyone's talking about is that Wrecking Ball now doesn't actually have to unball when he uses his shields, which is huge. I mean, you can just slam into them, go past them, use your E, and you won't stop rolling. You just keep on rolling, rolling, rolling until, you know, they can try to catch you, but it's they're not going to be able to kill you as quick, which is a big deal because you're going to be mobile as, as, uh, more often. So a lot more mobility there for, for certain characters due to these uh, patch changes. Uh, do you think this actually opens up uh, more specific comps uh, in relation to maps? Uh, for instance, like King's Row had always been a pretty uh, good map for Reinhardt Zarya, even before the 3-3 GOATS meta. Do you think like, King's yeah. Row is going to stay that way and then on other maps we're going to get very map-dependent uh, compositions? The King's Row could very well stay that way. Mostly the, the streets face and the, the last part of the map are very much very good for the Rhinesaria composition. But the first 
first point with all those high ground things that are still going on there there's actually a lot of potential for maybe bunker compositions even dps compositions to a large degree uh, we've already seen them you know the junkrat widowmaker compositions that we saw in the earlier parts of overwatch league and uh, season one um but now even that can come back with uh with the junkrat buffs with the ash buffs with mercy being a bit stronger with orissa being a bit better you know everything is kind of working uh, working for those compositions and even here on iconwald that's uh, something we can very well see because I mean, Eichenwald is not exactly like King's Row. Like, it's a different map. It's a different country. Let's not compare them too much. But there's a lot of things you can do here, uh, especially surrounding Faraz, uh, maybe even Orisa standing up in, the, in that little uh, yacht cabin uh, next to the point. So yeah, defensive comps really have the opportunity to not necessarily have to run 3-3 here. And even on the offense, you don't have to. It's all about what is your opponent play and what do you feel comfortable playing into, I suppose. Interesting defensive composition coming out uh, from the team of Argon that we just spoke to, which is PSU, power supply unit, and uh, they're going to have some uh, power behind them with the DPS choices that they've got. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to be looking to uh, shut down a lot of what, uh, what an attacking composition wants to do. That Sombra is going to go behind them, look into their spawn, uh, hack a key target, and just disable what they want to do. I think on the attack, they're going to want to scout out what they have with that Sombra Sneaky Turtle and then just uh, see where they go with that. Um, don't don't look to be too set in their ways just yet. And for those watching, uh, no, Morningside Mustangs uh, aren't all Scottish. The MC before a lot of their names uh, is actually comes from uh, their college, I believe. So uh, hence why we may not be pronouncing those MCs. Uh, but they are moving forward now, gauging out their opponents and uh, Tatsuya there. Just putting a little bit of damage in onto the back line of the Mustangs. Has to translocate out of there for safety. And both teams just poking away, but Sujo will get the first kill on this fight onto Sneaky Turtle with that dynamite. And that may have just shut down that push. Yeah, it probably did. And it looked like actually going pretty well for the attackers because Kodama was forced back really hard, took a lot of damage. The shield went down early. And uh, the Zarya bubbles weren't that clean but luckily for the defenders they had some room to back off to got a pick off here and there and then actually were able to stabilize uh, back for that so it's up to you the attackers to now do that a bit, little bit better capitalize on the bubble mistakes maybe from the defenders a little bit more and then just run forward we are seeing a nano out onto Kodama however it's fantastic and Tatsuya to end up getting the kills there a uh, really good biotic uh, grenade I thought from uh, Mr. Geek there but unfortunately, didn't pay dividends, and now they're getting pushed all the way back to school. Yeah, and as good as that biotic nade was, I think the nano boost was supposed to go onto Moth because it went onto Reliant, and that was not the one you wanted to get. And this is a good shatter, staring out the pulls even further. <laughs> Fantastic! Oh, you yeah, hate to see on. it. And uh, that ult allowed the rest of his team to build up their ult charge as well. Yeah, I know the defenders have still pretty good old bank. They have four, uh, four brewing up there, and the attackers, they're coming up to some of their own, but not the bigger combos that you'd really want. They have to re hit a bit, pretty good shatter in order to be able to kill things. What are you using? The Graviton Surge at the moment. Kodomo just swinging away into it. Bob does something, gets a 2k. Love to see it when Bob actually does something there, but again, Power Supply Unit just chasing the Mustangs back into spawn, and only 1 minute 49 left on the clock. Well, that's kind of what happens when you run these heavier compositions. The environment of the map doesn't really matter that much to you as long as you have a corner to hold behind. So you can just you can just push them into your spawn, and even if they kill you there, you might even have a recontest opportunity. Now, the attackers are actually having some ults now, so they could actually go into this really favorable. Oh, yes. As I say that though, going down from Kodama oh. with the EMP as well. Look at that combo. Look at that kill feed. It is blue, blue, blue. Wow. That's the Houston Outlaw special, as we've come to call it. You know, those Dante Muma shatters together, and they're just copying it well, play, just by the playbook. They have some other heroes on their team, but that's just the only two you really need if you want to pull up that combo. So the Sombra and the Reiner really working out together very well. And the attackers really got to start using these ultimates because they have way too many to still be comfortably fighting. Speaking of ultimates, Shas comes down. Moth managing to finish off uh, fantastic with that fire strike. And look at this. Graviton Surge capturing the rest of PSU in it. And that's just allowed the Mustangs to push through, get some kills. Kodama's still not down, but does get finished off by Sneaky Turtle. And Mustangs should be able to take this point. 
Uh, the contest is gonna come in here though. Fantastic coming back in with Argon, Tatsuya. I don't think it's gonna be enough, but they still are actually, uh, they actually force out the Death Blossom. I did not see that coming. Oh, uh, they had Bob as well, but he was forced just off the point there. So uh, they actually fed quite a lot of ultimate charge to the Mustangs there. Yeah, but actually Bob does. I don't think Bob actually generates ultimate for your team. Um, I'm pretty sure he no, doesn't. No, he so, doesn't. Yeah, the rest of the supports, the supports did, yeah. <laughs> what I will say though is that Argon has been putting out a tremendous amount of healing. You saw how long Kodama was being able to stay alive even after the fight was def decisively lost. It's all because of Argon. He's just in a good position, constantly healing this team. <laughs> Kodama goes for these plays and then they just win another fight. Of just been hitting shatter after shatter after shatter. It's finally finished off uh, by uh, Dragon there. And there's a bit of a brawl on the point, but the spawn advantage is heavily in favor of the Mustangs. So they're just pushing forward using that DPS to, to pump in some damage. And uh, Joshua what there, having to retreat and use that bubble to stay alive. And the Morningside College uh, students really are just pushing the car card forward here. Uh, it's up to Pirates play unit to take a different position. They're going through the high ground, it seems. You want to take the favorable position to just jump on them without using cooldowns. They're going from behind with a Graviton. That's they a good play. Oh, caught in there. That is a fantastic by Otic Grenade as well from Argon. Argon's just been hitting them all match long. And it's paying off in dividends there. Just a team wipe from PSU. Now you really gotta start wondering how McDragonfies is just not able to actually uh, well, eat any of those anti-nades or any of the sleep darts that are coming out and even the Graviton was just free. It's like they didn't really expect them to come from behind them. Maybe they thought they were going up, up, up on the high ground like I, I, I also thought they were gonna do at first. Uh, but now they're switching over to this Winston, more mobility, more high ground contest and uh, that, should, that should maybe work in their favor. Let's see what they do with this because there's coming up to just around a minute left on the clock. They've got a few ultimates coming up as well. Uh, DMB Cool taking a little bit of a rest there on the high ground. And Dive now coming in from Moth. High ground now secured by the Mustangs. We're seeing the Dead Eye come out. Doesn't manage to get it off though. Suju manages to find him before he does so. A Sneaky Turtle goes down as well. Suju getting the 2k there. Uh, this could prove pivotal. If you are Mustangs, you, you just need to retreat and regroup and come back as a six. Yeah, they did it straight away as well. They only got 38 seconds left, so if they're gonna die, they have to die now, because they have then they'll have a solid chance to probably regroup. Seems like they just want to chill out on the high ground, which is fine. I mean, they're they're gonna be fine. I don't think they're really gonna get chased that hard. Um, as long as they don't die, they should be good. 20 seconds left on the clock. Uh, Mustangs diving onto the point there. Mustangs popped his bubble. We're seeing Bob coming out from Sujo, pumping a little bit of damage in there, but it's Kadama who's just swinging left and right, getting all of the kills here. All of the ultimates are coming out. Seven seconds left on the clock. Pierce, you know that they can just rescue right now. They don't have to worry about the Mustangs getting back to point at all. And they're going to stop that car halfway through second. I know, but you know, in real, in, re in reality, that could have been a lot worse for uh, uh, for the Mustangs there. They they had a lot of trouble cap capturing the first point, and then even getting it halfway about through second. That's uh, that's decent, you know, for the for the start of the game they had. I will say though that the Reaper did not really seem to get a lot of value. I think if they had gone with a different DPS, maybe just another tank or another support, even you know, it's still viable. Uh, that that might have been do doing a little bit better for them. They did switch up to some different things. It seems like they did want to take the high ground more, but then their last engage was just straight through the low ground. Everyone was there, ready to be shattered by Kodama. That was just uh, it was just the nail in the coffin, really, for that attack. But, you know, a good attack uh, is not necessarily anything you need. You also need a good defense, because, you know, if they can't push the card further than you or even unlock the card, you still win the map. So a lot of, a lot of chances here for Morningside's uh, Mustangs to still pull this one uh, in their favor. It's winnable, as we call it, and uh, that's all, all we need to make it an exciting match. Otherwise, we might just stop here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's certainly so not over yet. Uh, it's, it's not over until uh, until the uh, game over sign comes up, I guess. Yeah, really. I mean, it doesn't have to even come up. Like, maybe it just ticks out. Um, but yeah, we're going to see the McCree Farah defense with the Reinhardt Zarya, the Mercy, the Lucio. Uh, it's going to be... A little bit of a low healing composition. So Reliant will really have to play well around his tanks in order to heal the poke up for them. Uh, but uh, Mr. Geek will really be mostly fine with Sneaky Turtle for the damage boost, I suppose. Argon coming out the gates on the Moira this time around. PSU 
pushing up to first, using the archway for a little bit of cover. And now they're pushing through, choosing to rotate left and head straight to point. Mustangs have rotated to meet them. Both teams now battling it out. Who will get the first pick here? Sujo will get the first pick onto Moth, giving the numbers advantage just to PSU. They're pushing forward. They managed to figure, uh, finish off uh, Dragons as well. Uh, Mr. Geek goes down for the resurrection, but it will not matter. Look at that kill feed. It is blue, blue, blue. And oh my god, Mirage already charged by Sneaky Turtle. Doesn't manage to get it off though. Buys it into uh, a shield there and ends up killing himself, unfortunately. But PSU making a really good headway on this point. Uh, it's really a problematic idea that you're doing there with the with the attackers just running this double main tank setup actually and just walking onto the point in a, in a true style that a 3-3 composition would do. And the defenders are just standing there with a very, but a much weaker front line. They're only standing there with the Reiner, Zari and Lucio, and everyone else just doesn't want to brawl. They just want to run away as far as possible and then you just lose out because you just have fewer people fighting each other at the same time. I switch things up a little bit now, coming close to point, trying to contest a little, stop it moving. They do manage to get a pick onto Fantastic, so they've got the numbers advantage. Are they going to press it? They're being quite patient here. They don't want to lose a member so close to the enemy spawn. They're not even close to the enemy spawn, also close to the end of the map. They really need to worry not to lose a fight because then they'll be scrambling to re-attack. This is really where they have to hold them uh, as long as possible, if not for the full five minutes. <laughs> we talk about five minutes here, yeah, 4.47 left on the clock, that is a long time. PSU, you've got to be confident with that, They're sending out the self-destruct. Joshua Watt finds two! That's going to be it for that fight, surely. It should be, yeah, and this is very well spotted as well, because uh, I think I think uh, Dragon had just used the uh, used the bubble, the self bubble on itself, and then Brigitte, you know, obviously she has a shield, but it's hard for her to get away, and it was just a good positioning. In the middle of the enemy team, they couldn't all get cover, and uh, if you get two, you're always happy with this. You'll be able to self-destruct, especially if you don't have to combo it with anything else, because now they still have four other ultimates up. Morning side Mustangs engaging with the transcendence of Mr. Geek, and that self-destruct will find fantastic as well, but Blade coming out, Sujo finds one, gets, then gets knocked off the edge, just comes back, gets the 2k, I cannot believe that, almost dies but manages to come back, get another two kills with that blade. That payload is moving and PSU are going to take Icon Vault. <laughs> that was a, uh, that was an old fight if I've ever seen one. And then the most surprising thing right at the end is that there's still ultimates left on Morning Side. You're like, well, if you're going to go for that all out old fight, just throw everything out. Why don't you? They're doing it. But yeah, Sujo definitely showing a lot of skill in the DPS, both on the Ash and on the Genji there in the end, just being able to actually come back over the edge and actually build things. That's just amazing. It is these shots, hitting everything. Ash has really begun, gotten very powerful with this patch, and I really like seeing that they uh, they push it out here and get all this with it. 70% kill participation. I mean, that says it all, really, right there. It uh, does in Joe. indeed. And not only was that uh, an exciting match uh, to watch, and an exciting last fight there with that Genji Blade, but now we get a little bit more excitement. We start getting into the map picks and bands, uh, hero picks and bands, all of that good stuff. So it is for, uh, I believe, PSU to ban uh, a single map in our, in our map pool. Uh, and then that's going to allow the Morningside Mustangs to pick a map. So yes. if you're the Mustangs, uh, well, I suppose it's going to be dependent on what's banned here. So if you're PSU, which, which map are you banning right now? If you're PSU, which map are you banning? I don't know. I don't think uh, the Morningside Mustangs really have shown a composition that they're better on necessarily just yet. So any anything really goes at this point. I think at this point you just go for what do you think is your least favorite map. You just ban that. Uh, looks like they want to ban Horizon Lunar Colony. It's been something that a lot of teams are a lot of players are not really happy with still. It's been reworked. It's already better than it was. Um, but it's understandable that some teams don't want to play it still. Uh, so Horizon will be out of the pool for this game. Also. If you've been watching the games, you think like, oh, that guy uh, or that you know, player, that, that really was something I enjoyed in that play. Maybe it was Argon on that uh, on that Ana. Um, maybe it was Soju, you know, uh, the Ash, the Genji. There's actually the MVP vote underneath on the Twitch banner. So, you know, go and go and select someone. Obviously, feel free to watch the rest of the maps because you never know. Maybe someone else will pop up and you've made a wrong choice. You can't vote again unless you donate bits and... No. <laughs> Some people like to be economical. Uh -huh. Indeed, indeed. Uh, but yeah, make sure you do vote for your MVP. The players <laughs> really appreciate it. And, and it's a good gauge as well of what um, you guys on Twitch uh, like uh, to see. 
because uh, quite often, uh, you know, I come up with a prediction, class comes up with a prediction, and we're, we're completely wrong, right? So uh, make yeah, sure you get yeah. in there uh, and you're voting. Uh, we it, will, it will often happen. Yeah. Might be. Okay, no. So we're, we're, we're still deciding maps here. I don't think we can go on to uh, another hybrid map at the moment. So um, No, I, they're not unfortunately be not. <laughs> and also, uh, Horizon has been banned. So that kind of limits the, the choices here. Um, I think we're going to go to Hanamura though, because that looks that looks to be coming out now. Um, but yeah, that uh, that really opens up uh, a lot more problems than solutions, really, because uh, Hanamura is a two CP map. It is uh, indeed. It's not it's not Horizon, so that's already maybe a relief for some of you watching. But Hanamura is a really fun map. Um, I I really like it for the fact that you have this very distinctive choke at the first point. Um, which a lot of people sometimes have trouble coming through. Some people well, teams will let you go through, but then have something set up to really deal with you properly. Um, and then on second, it's very different. The second point is all about the high ground. It's all about, you know, there's a lot of entrances, but all those entrances can be covered very well if you stand in the right position as a defender. So yeah, that's, that's much more of a chess game of where do you rotate and how do you rotate and what do you use? Um, and that's, it's much more... I, I personally find it more enjoyable as a strategy game uh, than when you go, for instance, to an escort or especially control map, where it's just a lot of brawling uh, and not so much thinking about where are you in the moment. And if you're PSU at the moment, you're going to be able to save a hero from, from the banning yeah. process. Uh, yeah. Looks like they have picked Winston here. I was about to say, this yeah. is going to be a hard choice for them, because uh, when you win a map so decisively, Sometimes you just don't know what to say, so you're thinking, okay, what, what what's the enemy going to ban here? But uh, obviously they don't know that, so now uh, they're choosing to attack as well. So we're going to see a yeah. switch of colours, so uh, it will be PSU in red this time round, and the yeah. uh, Mustangs will be in blue, but now we get the hero ban. Uh, predictions? Uh, hero ban. If you save Winston, you kind of feel like you're going, go, going to go with Dive, maybe a 3-3 composition with a Winston instead of a Reinhardt. They also ran a 3-3 composition with a Winston instead of a Zarya. So, apparently they like playing Winston. So, uh, more than they like playing Zarya for the damage. Oh, so, they're banning Anna! Yeah, and if you've seen Argon play, yeah. I think you're just going to be able to want to kill Kodama. Uh, and the only way you can really do that is by not having Argon on Anna. And with not having those anti nades against your team and not having the nano boost on Sujo. I think it's a pretty solid ban. I uh, don't know if it's everything they'll need, but Anna works very well with a lot of with a variety of compositions. Works very well with Winston um, and with most DPS, obviously. So if you don't want to play against as many DPS being as powerful as they've been on PSU, this is just good. I like it. I like this ban, and it's not not one we see a lot. But neither do we see the Winston save a lot. So it's we new. Don't. It's exciting. And, uh, <laughs> it is interesting though because Argon. Uh, we, we Pleasure of speaking to him before this match begun. He's a flex player, right? So, yes, he was very good on yes. Anna, but I'm sure he's very good on other heroes as well. And uh, we're going to be able yeah. to witness that going into Hanamura. And again, the teams have switched sides. So it is going to be PSU in the red on the attack, which means the Mustangs are going to be on the defense. Let's see what heroes they lock in. Well, let's see, because, I mean, they still have 30 seconds, so we won't be able to see anything just yet. But... Um... I was talking earlier about this choke on Hanamura first, right? And it looks like it's just one big hole, like door where you can go through. But then you notice there is these 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 openings above the gates. Uh, there's there's this hole on the side. Like there's much more avenues to get in than you would think. The only thing there isn't is a place on the side for far or, or something else to climb or fly over. Um, so that's a bit of a shame, but. You know, there's still plenty of opportunity, and mainly you just have to use your team uh, to its fullest effect to actually get through the middle. And I think that's where uh, Hanamura really shines as a 2CP map, to really have that, that teamwork. That's where the teamwork really has to come through. And uh, once you're through, then the rest of the, the, the game really starts to happen. And with this new patch as well, and all these minor tweaks to heroes, uh, maybe Doomfist is viable again. Uh, with the cooldown reductions perhaps, that he's received. Perhaps. Maybe we'll see some. I don't know. He's I mean, not been picked out yet, uh, all I know is that Sneaky Turtle and Mr. Geek are going to be flying around the air again on the pharmacy. Uh, going to be supported. No, they're going to support each other, really. And the DMB Cool can also be uh, also be damage boosted a little bit. On the attack, though, they look to be going with a quad tank setup here, but mobile and heavy at the same time. So they took the take the dive, take dive takes and hammer to Winston. 
And then the, the heavy ones, Brandon and Zarya. And they're just going straight down the middle. Now, PSU trying to get some value, but they lose Joshua very early on, so they don't have the numbers advantage. And they're having to back off a bit, and there's a little bit of a poke phase going on at the moment, class. Yeah, and Moth really you had to position correctly, just immediately take out jo uh, Joshua Watt on the on the Reinhardt there. Uh, they're gonna not switch off the Reinhardt, they're gonna stick with this, and I like uh, I like it, you know, a little bit of determination, not switching too soon. Switching and now the chaos just ensues, this is just this chaos is right Joshua now. Watt gets the first kill, absolute chaos, pushing onto the point, Joshua Watt gets the UK there as well. Both teams brawling it out, but the kill feed look red early, this is good for PSU. And the coalescence there, finishing off Sneaky Turtle. Kadama, with the left click, with the electricity as well, taking out Mr. Geek. And that is going to solidify PSU's control of first point. And they're going to be going on to second with a lot of time in the bank. It really is. And I mean, it, it, it really, they really did something you're not normally supposed to do. They just walked straight through the middle of, uh, of the Morningside Mustangs there. But if you have four tanks and enough healing, there's no way they're going to be able to kill any one of you, especially now they split you up while doing so. Now they've switched over to the to the Junkrat, who of course does a lot more damage now, and especially against tanks, easy to hit. Oh, uh, it's going to be a, uh, a lot of tires. Goes for the shatter as well. He's swinging left and right. Kadama coming with him as well. But there's a counter shatter this time from Moth. Sneaky Turtle using those grenades, great effect to uh, put that extra damage in. However, look at this. We've already got a graviton surge up. Great sound barrier there, though from Reliant, keeping his team alive, and they do have the spawn advantage. They just need to come back and get a few kills. And the Mustangs have numbers, but Mr. Geek's gone down, and look at the charge that Sujo has. Gets boots off the top there, though, so can't utilize that DPS at this moment in time, and that's just allowed the Mustangs to stabilize. But no, PSU feel like they can win this fight. They're still coming in, pumping in the damage. And Joshua Watt does get a kill onto DMB Cool, and now the Coalescence is coming out. Now we've got Ultimates going out everywhere. Minefield on the point. It takes out Mr. Geek. Sneaky Turtle goes down as well to Argon. And this is Argon we've got on the Wrecking Ball, remember. The uh, great Anna player from Eichenwald. And it looks as though PSU are going to be able to take this point with a lot of time on the clock. As I say that though, Riptire coming out from Sneaky Turtle. Trying to get a kill, does take out Tatsuya. Moth has fallen though. Uh, again, spawn advantage still in favor of the defenders. Reliant caught in a Graviton Surge. Finished off. Great wall there. A defensive wall to shield some of the damage from Dragon. Uh, it looks as though the defenders are in sorting mode, but if they get one or two kills, they should be good. But again, it's Argon in the kill feed, just making kill after kill after kill. Uh, DMB cool there, gets smacked into that wall. And uh, this has got to be it, surely. You would think so, but then again, like the, uh, every time DMB cool comes back, he's going to be able to sustain himself forever on that Reaper, because those shotguns give him a lot of life from high health targets. He's almost back again, so he might actually be able to contest once more. And there he goes again with those shotguns. <laughs> another minefield. Uh, another wall there. Uh, look at the stall though. This is uh, actually really oh! good. Sex. Oh, oh I'm going to go straight into the minefield. <laughs> uh, you just need to keep people alive on this point because if they can stall and stall and stall, even if they lose it, they, they, they've taken up a lot of time here. They've taken up at least a minute, maybe even two. And they've still got members coming back to point. High mobility members. Members that can uh, move around on that point. And rely it back on the Pagita as well, trying to shield bash. Uh, Sneaky Turtle caught in the Graviton Surge. Uh, but uh, uh, DMB Cool is just whipping around. Doesn't eventually get finished off by his opposite number. But look at this. We get the resurrection onto Reliant. We've got another Wrecking Ball coming back onto point. Uh, Moth there putting up the minefield as well. This fight has been going on uh, longer than the rest of the match, I think, at this point. <laughs> Look at this. When did uh, much this longer. <laughs> We're already on. Wait, like, the match has been going already for like 4 minutes and 15 seconds and still no one has capped the point. They're getting closer and closer by the second, but it's it's just not happening <laughs> just yet. This is uh, very interesting to watch. Uh, you know, people complain sometimes about the 3-3 three, three compositions uh, uh, and their fight's going on a bit too long, but that fight was going on for... I wish I had a stopwatch. Yeah, I mean, and so so the big difference why with 3-3 three, three, the fights don't go on as long as this is that you have a Zenyatta there who just uh, completely boosts target focus of a team. And they were focusing targets pretty well on the side of PSU, but then... Uh, because they don't have that discord and that, not that extra damage from the Zenyatta and tanks themselves don't do... I mean, they do damage, but not as much as, for instance, DPS or High Charge Zarya will do. Then, um, yeah, the, 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 the targets just don't die as quickly. So that's why stall is so much more effective when they don't play against the 3-3 three, three composition. Uh, it was, it was, it was pretty, a pretty insane stall there, to be honest. 
<laughs> it really, really was. Something we don't see we don't see every day. Um and uh yeah, well well done for uh well done to them for doing that on the side of Morning Star Mustangs. But they do have their work cut out for them because they've been I wouldn't say that they've necessarily been outclassed so far, but they, they really have to show something new to well basically get off that back foot that have been uh, been pushed upon. We are a little bit on the back foot here. We have to remember that although that fight did go on for a long time, PSU did end up taking the point with 3 minutes 35 seconds remaining, which is a very reasonable uh, time indeed. And they've been looking really, really strong uh, throughout this matchup on Eichelwald and now on Hanamer as well. They're on defense. Uh, they've got a very heavy DPS composition again. You know, this yeah. uh, ping pong, pin three ball, of them. whatever you call it, <laughs> composition. It's <laughs> going yes, off the record. Yes. I mean, I like Sujo on the Ash. I mean, I think Ash is really good, good pick, especially against heavy compositions because that Dynamite just does so much damage. And now actually ignores armor, which is also new with this patch. Uh, and plus, apparently she couldn't be a damage boost before when she threw the Dynamite. That's also possible now. A lot of good things here. On the attack, though, they're just going to come out with the uh, with the Zenyatta 3-3 composition, something that's been a, a staple for a long time. They were swinging away, trying to find the Somber, but don't quite manage to. Joshua doing a bit of damage and translocates away. Mustangs now choosing the right-hand route, trying to avoid some poke damage there. Maybe go the long way, but Mr. Geek falls to Argon early on. They don't have the numbers advantage, and uh, PSU are just going to be able to poke away, do a bit of damage here, and eventually finish off all their targets, all the while gaining ultimate charge here. Yeah, and like they don't have to go inside here, but it just seems like the attackers really don't want to just wait there until their teammates arrive or do anything else. They want to try and keep fighting. The pick up onto Argon is good, but I think they're just going to get rest by, by Fantastic as soon as the, the space is there. Yeah, yeah there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and that kill feed is red once more. And, and those Dragon still there. The that is not... Yeah, it's, at that point you have to either just try to back out as quick as possible or just die. Because now they just wait, not only wasted ultimate charge, they wasted time as well. And that's just not something you want. Yeah, I think as soon as Mr. Geek went down, you got to go either forward or back. You, you, you can't just stay there and take the poke damage, especially from an enemy composition that has all this DPS. Because look, now we've got the barrage of Taxia. We've got the uh, Valkyrie now of Fantastic as well. A lot of ults on the defense. Not even needed as Sujo takes out Both early on. We will see Bob coming out to do something. Doesn't do too much. I think uh, that was it. Bob was intended to go through the gateway, the archway there, but just gets caught in the scenery. But Killfeet's still looking red. Yeah, and we've often said, I mean, Jeff Kaplan himself has even said it, right? Is that, yeah, you, sure, of course, you see Goats being played in Overwatch League and maybe in the highest tiers of Grandmaster and the top 500 tiers. But, you know, everyone else doesn't really play Goats. I mean, they play the heroes, but not exactly the composition. And that's kind of what's happening here as well to uh, to the Morning Stars. To, you know, Morning Star Mustangs? Uh, Morning Side Mustangs, I think it even is. Um, but yeah, they, they really don't don't play the composition like it's supposed to be. They try to ball up, but then they don't actually walk <laughs> forward. They, yeah, yeah, yeah and then this happens. The ultimates yeah. come out for the defense. A barrage point to... Maybe that was a little bit of an overinvestment, because you must be pretty Maybe. confident if you're PSU at the moment, but they just used a lot of ults there. They did. They only have the Transcendence left, which is a pretty big ultimate. <laughs> That's, uh, we're not going to lie about that one. Yeah, if you keep dying, aggressive. if you keep getting kills here, I mean, they they are they are building up to those ultimates so quickly. I mean, Sujo almost has another Bob, uh, and I think a big big reason as well why this three three composition is not working out the way they want that Argon just keeps booping them around, and the boop is a lot stronger this patch. Remember that. It is indeed, and it looks as though the Mustangs are just struggling a bit. They they want to get through this door, but they're trying not to lose a member. Uh, Argon just diving in there, causing a bit of chaos, doing a bit of damage, charging up his ultimate. And it will be Sneak Turtle that takes out Tatsuya. Headshot in the sky. This could be the opening they need, and they are pushing forward with the Valkyrie, with the Shatter, with the Sound Barrier, with a lot of ults here, but they haven't gained too much value. And now Bob is on point. He's trying to do something there. Argon getting the kill on Sneak Turtle as well as even the numbers in this fight out. And if you are the Mustangs here, you want to get some kills, and Moth does exactly that with an excellent charge, pinning Joshua into the wall, swinging away, gets the 2k, killing Kadama as well. However, Orgon's minefield finds Reliant, and look at that kill feed! Orgon is just getting kill of the kill of the kill on this wrecking ball. Yeah, and Mr. Geek wanted to just fly back up to the cliff, but there was no teammate to fly to, so you just saw him floating slowly, slowly to the pit of despair, which is the cliff of Hanamura. Bob is trying to do off. something. He's trying to keep dreams oh, alive. Oh, he Three seconds left. Does eventually manage to get on there. 
allowing boys some time at this point the it does get a kill Dibby Cool's been resurrected, but so has Tatsuya. There's a fight on this point. And now it is Dragonflies there on the Wrecking Ball, swinging around, causing some chaos, uh, creating a little bit of space here. And they might be able to take some fantastic on the Mercy, getting the 3k. How often do you see that? That was a fantastic thing to see, what I've ever seen. <laughs> this is crazy. This fight's crazy. We're seeing the EMP come out now. BSU are probably going to secure the win here. Yes, they do. But the 3k from the Mercy at the end there, uh, that just made my evening. <laughs> that was amazing. Honestly, like, uh, I, I don't see things a lot, uh, but that was definitely a thing I saw and I think I enjoyed seeing. Um, yeah, fantastic. Definitely. You know, if you can pull the pistol out, sometimes you do it. Um, you know, there's been there's been several debates of when you see a good be someone being a good Mercy player. One of them has really been, how often does she pull out the pistol? Like, how much uptime with pistols you have, how much damage she's able to pull out with it. That really defined a good Mercy. But at this point, really, um, yeah, but you also see a lot of Mercies you know, going for more for the damage boost approach, which you let your DPS do the damage. Now, I don't know which one is necessarily better, but it seems that this one was working out pretty well. Mercy, best DPS hero around. That was fantastic to watch there. Uh, two nil now in favor of PSU. And uh, we will be going back to uh, map banning and saving and hero banning and saving so uh, the maps do carry forward once a map has been banned in this series it can no longer be picked however hero bans do reset so uh, we'll be going to the map ban and then the map picks so uh, PSU have chosen to ban route 66 interesting yes uh, that's a very interesting choice I think it's mostly because they just I don't know actually why they may just not enjoy the map uh, I think still, as, as when you're PSU, you really don't, still not that afraid of what what uh, Morning Stars, what well, the Morning Side can do. The Mustangs, the, the the guys in blue right now, maybe the guys in blue in the the next map. Um, but yeah, I mean, when they're going to Busan, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best choice. I don't know if it's the worst choice. Honestly, at this point, I just I just don't know. Um, I think the reason why you might go want to go for Busan is because it's more of a, a straightforward map com as compared to the others. Uh, it's just, you know, you fight the other team and that's about it. Also, um, you don't tend to see too much Mercy, so maybe they're just trying to limit the DPS of, of that Mercy. Maybe. <laughs> maybe it. it's very oh. possible. I mean, on the other hand, you know, Argon can then come back on the on the Ana, and then uh, there's just a lot of things really that you could do. Um, because now they need to save a hero, and I don't know if they're going to save the Winston again, because they really didn't use the Winston that much on attack. Um, I mean, they used him, but he wasn't really the integral part of that attack. That was uh, He was also there. I think that was mainly what you can say about the Winston. Um, but maybe they'll save something more valuable this time to them. Um, and maybe the ban will be different as well. Uh, just banning the Ana apparently didn't work, so maybe they need to try something new. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what they come out with here. Uh, PSU are going to be back in the blue this time uh, with the Mustangs uh, in the red. So the hero that was saved was Wrecking Ball. Yep. Uh, yep. I mean, that's just... That's, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's that's what it is. I mean, if he's saw Argon flying around booping people, you know, using that new CC patch... Uh, to its greatest effect, I think that's a smart, uh, smart uh, hero save. We've seen it happen earlier in this tournament, obviously. Uh, I think that was Hana. I don't remember what team was Hana on again. Um, well, that is a good question. One was that? Was that? Be on... Wasn't and Aimless? It might have been. I just don't remember who it was. But look out for her. At least because, uh, she it doesn't really matter. Did she really uh, yeah, did show. Sure. That's why they, they they saved it. And they're gonna ban Zenyatta here on the other side of it. So while Ball mm -hmm. is going to be available, they're not gonna use the one hero that just allows you to focus him a little bit easier, which is Zenyatta. Um, that's an interesting choice. On the other hand, they could also say, well, we're gonna limit your support options. We're not gonna give you, give you the Zenyatta option. Uh, not gonna go for the Ana this time, but then again, you know, I don't think it really matters which one you ban. They'll they have a good support lineup anyways on the side of PSU. So it's just about what they want to do or not want to do with Zenyatta themselves. I feel on the side of uh, of the Mustang. So new Zenyatta on Busan here. 
PSU versus the Mustangs. It is 2-0 in favor of PSU. And uh, make sure you are voting for your MVP of the match. I've already got uh, some predictions in mind. And I don't know, maybe I'll be proven wrong again. But I don't think so this time around. Because yeah. uh, I maybe think there's one, play, <laughs> there's one play that actually one play player of the game mvp just based on one play uh, and i won't let that cat out of the bag but i'm sure you can all guess what it was <laughs> yeah that was uh, that was moth uh was charging into the enemy spawn right oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yes yeah, yeah that's right that was the okay no i'm sure that i'm sure that was that's what it was uh, the <laughs> moth saw a lamp and then had to go for it that's uh that's normal uh but yeah we're gonna start on mecha base uh, obviously a map that has moving parts because we have the three shields on the middle of the map on the control point itself which can be detrimental or life-saving so uh, let's see which which are going to be today uh and uh these both these teams have shown a few different compositions i think um the mustangs have been a little more prone to default back to a standard 3-3 composition whereas the P as psu is really trying to abuse the meta um, the new patch really a little bit more. So they're trying to use more damage characters in order to, uh, to steer away from that. Um, but also they really like to use multiple tanks, as we've seen. And they look to be queuing up this quad tank opposition, the more traditional quad tank this time, not the one they ran on Hanamura, with the Roadhog. And uh, that's a hero we sure haven't seen that much of in, uh, in the latest months. What can't Argon play? That is what I would like to know. <laughs> he said they'd be coming out with some interesting compositions, but I was not expecting this. And it's great to see. It's absolutely fantastic to see. Both teams now moving up onto the high ground. Uh, this time we got Moth diving in on the Wrecking Ball, causing a little bit of chaos. But PSU just happy to stay there, walk through it, do a little bit of poke damage. They've got a lot of tanks and a lot of sustain here. Hook coming in from Argon doesn't find anyone, but the rockets of Joshua do find Dragon. That's allowing PSU to get a little bit more aggressive with that numbers advantage. They're going to be finishing off the Mustangs one by one by one, and then they're going to take this point and stake their claim. And I wonder whether this Wrecking Ball save was maybe a debate from, uh, from PSU <laughs> just saying, you know what? We'll save him, so you think we'll pick him, but then we won't pick him and pick everything against him, so you might pick him. And that, yeah, I don't think that's exactly what happened, but I mean, it sure works out for them pretty well. So, uh, Moth now almost with the mines, and Dragon obviously going over straight away to that Reaper, trying to get as much health out of those tanks as possible. Uh, Minefield buying a little bit of space for the Mustangs to get through that choke. They need to try and get some kills, but they're running into the coalescence of Tatsuya, which is keeping. Uh, Kadama alive and pumping in that little bit of extra damage and Orgon will get a kill on Seeky Turtle. Oh, that's two down though on the PSU. There's two down. Both sides uh, here, kind of brawling it out. They're not really able to push through. However, Graviton Surge comboed now with the self oh, oh, oh. My gosh. Oh, Hurts to see. I mean, you don't have a shield, so you kind of know it because it happens. I, I mean, as soon as I graviton on hit, I felt it coming. I saw that self destruct. I was like, oh, this is going to hurt so bad. And then uh, it obviously did because that's that's what happens. Well, when you get that numbers advantage, you, you, you got to push in, take the space, and get the angles right. And uh, unfortunately, Mustangs just weren't able to do that. But they do have the Riptire now uh, coming out from Sneaky Turtle. Gets just hogged out of the air by Argon. Whole hog. Creating a little bit of space and point still in uh, possession of PSU. Organ finding DMB cool. So again, they just have the yeah. numbers advantage. They're able to target focus. They're able to take out Mustangs one by one by one. And look at this. Dragon's voice going down. We've got 85% on the clock. I, I don't know if Mustangs are going to get back and do this. No, the ultimates are not getting the value. I mean, when is Dragon ever really going to use his? As soon as he does, he'll just get focused on straight away. The Miku gets fantastic, though. I think that's one of the only members that actually died on the side of PSU. And now uh, we have Moth pressuring the point a little bit, which is also yeah. nice. Could be a good opening. However, the Coalescence of Tatsuya does take out Mr. Geek. We do get a Death Blossom, finds one, gets hooked, finishes the Volgon as well. Does get the 2k, both teams fighting it out on the point. It is uh, for the Mustangs though, to win here. They need the win, otherwise they're going to be 1-0 down on the third map here, and they're just finished off. We see a bit of a zoning self-destruct at the end there. Uh, but you've got to feel really, really confident if you're PSU. You're just going to win one more map, and you take this series. 
Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here right now. And uh, I, I, I really fail to see how the, how the Mustangs are going to bring this back. And they really have to somehow do something here, space, using that space, as you said. You know, that you're, you're the man, you're the expert on that, that subject, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't even look like they want to go for the Wrecking Ball here just yet. Maybe they will in the end, but it's just going to be fantastic on the Widow. I don't think he's actually going to run that. Maybe he will. Who knows? People run weird things or different things. I don't know if his uh, mercy pistol Why? skills are anything to go by. I'm sure he'll be a good winner. <laughs> I oh yeah, they're switching last second, of course, trying to debate us as much as possible. Going out with a triple DPS and a Reinhardt for some reason, uh, and then on the other side, oh, they'll gosh. really kick the kill, kill dragon. You know the widow one v one. Domination has been established, and uh, everyone else is scrambling for uh, for all, not dying really. Um, Loth Force is fantastic off the high ground, but Fantastic just dives straight back up there, able to pump some damage in. Point unlocking in five seconds time. Both sides poking it out a bit, trying to get some more picks. Moth slamming into the middle, gets instantly slept, has to escape. Try and stay alive, but Tatsuya there, taking out DMB Cool. Point goes to PSU, and they are supplying all the power in this series. Look at this. That is uh, that is quite some power being being supplied there. Uh, Argon does go down to Dragon in the end there, but uh, yeah, that will he will be back soon. He's a tracer; it doesn't take that much time to respawn. We do now see where Fantastic gets the gets the Mercy <coughs> DPS from. Does die to Dragon as well though. Dragon now actually you know warming up maybe a little bit. Might be a bit late, but still you know it's still, still good to see. Well, that's what they need to open up this point because now Dragon can send in the shots. Look for those tasty, tasty heads. And they're pushing on to the point here. Mustangs get another kill. Kadama has fallen. However, look at the Shasta coming out from Tatsuya. Able enables the rest of his team to come through and get some kills. It's still pretty even on the point, and Cool's going around with those shotguns, just clicking heads, but does fall to Argon. Argon on the tracer gets the 2k. And every time you think the Mustangs have it, it's the fight flips around at the last moment. It's those pesky tank ultimate space. I don't know what to tell you. The shatters, the gravitons, the self destructs. It's all those six CC area ultimates that you just cannot dodge, where you don't have shields, don't have the mobility, or you just don't have the health to sustain them. And that's exactly what uh, what what the Mustangs just haven't been running. They have not been able to dodge anything. They need to do something now. Seventy five percent in favor. But PSU, and that, that dragon finds Mr. Geek. You can't push without your Anna here. And then Moth goes down. DMB Cool goes down. I mean, they do get Fantastic as a consolation prize. Dragon at least can feel good about himself. You know, he's been winning most of the Widow duels here. Been doing pretty well in the sniper cyber department. But yeah, if your team doesn't win, that still doesn't feel the best, I suppose. Yeah, they've got to touch the point, and they've got to do that now. 95%. This is going into overtime. Moth manages to get to point, gets slept, gets grenaded, gets deleted. And now someone else has to touch. They do have the benefit of the sound barrier and the uh, death blossom there, but there's a counter sound barrier to stop the damage getting through. Dragon finds his opposite number, so has the high ground. Now the EMP coming out from Seeky Turtle might just allow them to get this point, but Sujo gets another kill here. Sujo's been so, so effective on this Lucio through out downtown. Moth managing to get a melee key onto Kadama. This is good go either way, but no. PSU will win the series. Quite convincingly, and wow, that was uh, it was actually a pleasure to watch. I know it was a 3-0, but we saw some interesting compositions and uh, some interesting team fights. And let's have a look at this player of the game. Oh yeah, there we go. This is it. <laughs> That's not a hard one to uh, to collect there. Yep, a lot of damage, a lot of kills. Just chasing down Moth as well in the end there. There's a lot of damage put out there. It's uh. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's mostly Desaria setting that up, that one up, but uh, very nice still to capitalize on it. You, you have to have the inside of Diva just to walk up there and then just press Q. I mean, it is uh, it is a skill that people uh, really have not always mastered. So, hats off there to uh, to the Diva play the game. But, but make sure um, you uh, stick around because we we we're hoping to arrange an interview with one of the players of PSU after here, and also yeah, exactly. we'll be announcing your MVP as well. So. Uh, GG's to both teams there, and looks like we're going to be getting Orgon back, so this is interesting. We spoke with him, I believe, uh, before uh, this match, and they've just gone in, looked really dominant, and I, I really have quite a few questions <laughs> I'd like to run past him.
I mean, so what, what are questions that I would like to... I, I, I mean, I have, I have a few things that I would like to know, but I think you sure do as well. Um, oh, yeah, I, I mean... Uh, this, uh, you he's are already here. Yeah, uh, congratulations, you, you, you. man. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, how are you feeling right now after that uh, dominant display? Pretty good, pretty good. Our comps that we thought would be pretty dominant ended up being so, so... So let, well. yeah, let's talk about some of those compositions. We saw a lot of quad tank. Uh, 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 is that a change you've made because of the new patch? And if so, uh, uh, what what made you come to that decision process to, to to pick quad tank in those situations? The quad tank is something that we've uh, we just experiment with a lot. Um, that's just one of our compositions that we like to run. It's kind of similar to goats, um, but you can add the ball for a crossfire. Um, so I think we saw that on our Hanamura attack. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's necessarily a, a really good comp to run, but it's just something we like to run when we can. And speaking of ball, that, that wrecking ball, uh, did you, did, was this a bit of game theory on your team's part when, when you chose to save him for uh, Busan and then not really utilize him at all? Yeah. Um, the save on ball is just to secure the the ball triple dps possibility um, because you could run that on any busan map and that's probably going to be the best comp to run on all three of those maps close to it so it was kind of like our safety net if things go wrong we can have the ball dps comp if we need it well so it kept your options uh, open and it yeah. must feel pretty good as well like when you start off and some really good uh, biotic grenades and then to have anna banned after that like that's, that's got to be a feel good moment right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were talking in our comms about how uh, we were probably just going to win the game if they didn't start eating the eating the nades or somehow <laughs> countering the anti-nades because we kept getting fat antis on their team. Um, and the, the ban on Anna was just kind of a, you know, they realized they were losing to it as well. Um, I think it was also to stop the, the Nanoblade combo because that won us the map. That was, uh, oh my gosh, yeah, on uh, Eichenwald, Eichenwald where yeah. that was so, so close. Uh, it was, Genji going down to very low health. Get yeah, it was, it was, a, we almost called a reset there, and we were like, you know what, just go for it, Nano Blade, try to save it, and ended up working out. Yeah, a lot, that, that was one thing I noticed throughout this series as well. Um, every time uh, the Mustangs uh, gained a numbers advantage, your team were able to uh, turn it around with maybe a few DPS ults or uh, some quick kills and things like that. What was going through your comms at the time? Because when you're playing like GOAT style 3-3 compositions, it, it's quite easy to tell when a fight's usually won or lost, right? Depending on, on who's gone down and what ultimates you have to play with. Uh, with the compositions you're running today, uh, what were your comms like in those situations? um situations like that we we usually let i mean mid fight you can you can structure the comps theoretically however you want but mid fight um there are some things for example um i think we lost one or two to the diva bomb there i had to hide from the diva bomb as ana so i had no visibility on the fight so our genji player was really the only one that knew what was going on um and he's the one that made the call to commit to it um so i guess he he kind of saw that opportunity to blade and we just trusted him and i gave him the nano and he he did work with it so it's just yeah. whoever whoever is able to make the play calls if if they think it's winnable well okay. um uh, go, go ahead Klaus. no okay I, I like that i mean it's it's really you know we've seen it over which league carpe calling winnable and it just going for it you know <laughs> yep so, uh, if, if you if you see it just do it <laughs> if, if you see it do it and uh speaking of which i think there was a, a mercy 3k uh yeah as well, which is he cool. was excited about that yeah uh, I was sad when it wasn't player of the game, but it, it just wasn't to be. I think it was player of the game uh, in, in all of our hearts. Uh, but you've uh, got a 3-0 here in round three. You're going to be moving through to round four of the lower brackets, and you're going to be facing off against uh, the Toronto uh, Tide Pods. I, do you know much about them? Have you prepared specifically uh, for them? How are you feeling about your next uh, match in round four? Um, we feel pretty confident. Uh, we'll... I think against uh, against that team, we'll tighten down our comps a little bit, and um, possibly you'll see a lot more of the ball ball triple DPS setups. Um, so we're pr feeling pretty confident um, being able to play those compositions. Well, I'm really looking forward to uh, following your team throughout the rest of this tournament because that was that was really exciting to cast and to watch. Uh, are there any last minute uh, shout outs you'd like to make before we wrap this uh, interview up? Um, shout out to Hooligan. That's all. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you very much. But uh, before we uh, close the stream off, 
Uh, there is a very important announcement that I have to make, and that is the MVP of the match. And that goes to Joshua Watt. So uh, congratulations to Joshua Watt for getting MVP of the match. Uh, very well deserved there. Uh, I, I, my prediction was, was fantastic. You know, that was, uh, I think it was just because of that one play, but you can't bring everything down to one play. All right, can you, Glass? I mean, you really can't. I mean, you can't break everything down to simple plays. You can't bring everything down to... Um... Uh, to all oh, you just have the wrong hero. Sometimes one team is just better because they've just been playing better, to get better together. And that's really what Overwatch is about. It's a team game. You have to do it together. You win together, you lose together. And all you have to do is uh, pick yourself up after win as well. You got to keep practicing, keep going hard. And uh, that's what all these teams are about. And uh, make sure you... Uh... The Watchers Brawl on uh, Twitch, Twitter, all, all of the social media to keep up with this tournament because it, it really is a fantastic format. Uh, I love the hero ban system and the uh, and the match ban and pick system as well. Uh, if you want to see um, Power Supply Unit playing next, they are in round four against the Toronto Tide Pods, uh, which is going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I believe, uh, on the 22nd of March. So make sure you're tuning into that. Uh, I've been Spaceman. My uh, Twitter and Twitch, if you'd like to follow me, is Spaceman O W. And Man of Class. Yeah, I mean, it's, for me, it's basically the same thing. It's Man of Class O W. And uh, on Twitch and on Twitter, um, if you'd like to follow more of me, I also have a team that I coach, which is Team Corona O W. So shout out to those guys as well. Um, you'll find them through my Twitter. It's it's pretty easy to go to do. But that is going to be it from us at the Watchers Brawl. Thank you very much for coming to view this. We couldn't do it without you. That's a fantastic uh, format. Thank you as well to both teams for taking part as well. Commiserations to uh, Morningside Mustangs. You put on a good show, but Power Supply Unit managed to clinch the victory in the end. And congratulations once again to Power Supply Unit and to Josh Watt for getting MVP. But uh, we will be returning on the 22nd of so make sure you follow for the next uh, game.